When Armstrong first set foot on the moon, was it one small step for man? On July 20th, 1969, one of the most monumental events in the history of humans took place. That day, the first astronaut set foot on the surface of the moon. Yep. Neil Armstrong exited the moon lander and put the very first boot print ever in the dust of the lunar surface. However, there are some differing opinions on what really happened. A little controversy concerning the event. Not an unusual thing when something big like this occurs. Interested amateurs, experts, professionals, and scholars have reviewed the audio and video recordings of this remarkable achievement. And they don't all agree on what really happened. What happened was something that, because of the relatively new miracle of broadcast television, was observed by a large percentage of the world, live, as it happened, and has now been rewatched in recordings of the event perhaps millions of times in the years that have followed. And still, there is no solid consensus. Not that conspiracy, the other one. It will probably help our conversation if we make clear that we are not talking about the disagreement that you might be thinking of right now. Our questioned event does not even impact on whether or not the thing you might be thinking happened or not. Though these two elements of that event happened at exactly the same time and in the same place, no matter where or when it actually happened. So, let's briefly discuss the elephant in the room. The question. Did we really go to the moon on July 20th, 1969? Or was it a fake moon landing, filmed on a stage in Burbank, California? What we're attempting to do here is, well, complicate the matter a little more. <laughs> there have been a plethora of claims made about this video and and the sound and everything else being faked. And for every claim that the landing on the moon didn't happen, the way the shadows fall, the movement of the astronauts, the background, the way the US flag moves, and so many more, there is a logical explanation, clarification, or a proof that it did happen. Yet, disagreements persist. That's okay. Believe what you will. However, that is not the question we are going to tackle here. But if you want to explore that aspect, a quick search online will provide a avalanche of info on both sides of that specific conspiratorial argument. Our question is a vexing one that has been batted about for decades now, just like the moon landing itself. And at this point in time, most credible sources now believe Neil Armstrong did really set foot on the moon. But nobody is ready to make the definitive call when it comes to our little question. One small step for who? When Neil Armstrong first planted his boots on the surface of our closest neighbor in space, we heard these words. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Right? Are we sure? Well, apparently that was not what was supposed to be heard at that historical moment. And though Armstrong himself had rehearsed it several times, it seems he may have stated that phrase incorrectly. What was scripted for him to say, what we were supposed to hear was, one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. That one letter word, A, seems to be missing from the record. Did Armstrong muff it up? Thirty years later, in 1999, on the anniversary of the moon landing, in 1969, Armstrong admits he doesn't hear himself say the word A in the recording. 
but he is confident he said it. What's the deal? Did the recording of this missing A get lost in transmission? Did Armstrong omit it by accident? Did aliens snatch it away? Well, there are a few hypotheses that have been offered to explain the controversy over this mysterious missing A. The first and simplest seems to be that Armstrong just said the phrase wrong and omitted the A. That would be easy to do. Another idea has to do with the radio equipment used during the landing in 1969. There was a lot of extraneous and potentially distracting noise when astronauts were talking to each other in their spacesuits. It was an ongoing problem. John Powers, NASA public affairs officer during the Mercury program, used the phrase A OK. That was kind of his style. He figured that the sharp A, the A sound, would cut into the static better than the softer vowel sounds like O or AH and make things more understandable. Because the O and the AH would often just get lost in the static. And because this lack of sound clarity, short phrase like OK, could end up sounding like yay when it was transmitted. With this in mind, the hypothesis is that in the timing in the delivery of the phrase one small step for a man, it caused the effect of completely losing the A, or in this case the A, uh, sound between for and man. Thus the static in the radio overcame and seems to delete the word a, or the sound, in this case, ah. Okay. Maybe plausible. Say what? In 2006, a computer programmer, Peter Shanford, decided it was time to get to the bottom of the A. And he got the best equipment, the best recordings, and then went one step further. He investigated the spoken English vernacular of Wapakoneta, Ohio. He wanted to understand their accent, the way people spoke in the 1960s. Ford found something interesting. Seems that in that region, at that time, the way folks spoke the single letter word A would often be slurred or slipped into the word following it, creating a contraction or a compound word. The words does not can be said doesn't, and the word cannot is can't. The syllables and letters of the two words are scrunched together into one word, and thus the words a truck or a man would often be pronounced the truck, or in this case on the moon, the man, with the ah being short and almost disappearing into the M of man. In the Wapakoneta, Ohio version of English, one small step for a man becomes one small step for man with that quick ah disappearing. According to Ford, having spent countless hours reviewing the vernacular and the recording, Armstrong is very likely to have said just exactly what he was supposed to. But we didn't hear it, and still can't hear it now. It is a puzzle that will likely remain unanswered. There may be several wonderful little bits of wisdom to be gleaned from a story like this, but for now, we'll focus on just this one. Do you believe, Neil Armstrong, that no matter what everyone else heard, when he stepped on the moon, he said, that's one small step for a man? Nobody else heard it that way. That's not what we heard when it happened. But. Inside the helmet of the spacesuit, surrounded by the vacuum of space, through which sound does not travel, Neil Armstrong knows what he said, no matter what was transmitted to be heard by everyone else. So here's the ends. There are a few, and getting to be fewer moments when you are really alone, surrounded by a vacuum in a way that no one can perceive anything through, Times when you can choose what's right or go down a wrong path. 
and nobody can know which choice you made. But there will be two witnesses to all of it. You and God. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thanks for sticking with us and enjoying this episode. I hope you got a giggle out of it, made your head scratch a little bit, who knows. But if you did like it and you took this much time, won't you please just give us a like or subscribe to our podcast, even share it with a friend. Because we need to convince the algorithms in the internet that we're worth watching and we need your help. Thanks.